Welcome to the Wealth Builders Podcast, the women entrepreneurs' home for building successful businesses that generate passive income. You have entered a judgment-free zone. So give yourself permission to shake off all the things you haven't done because your journey to owning a thriving business you love starts right now. Hello, everybody, and welcome to today's episode of the Wealth Builders Podcast. I am your host, Renee Williams, and I am joined by my host, Camille Davis, and we are talking to Ivy Morales. Ivy is a licensed mortgage loan officer who is currently practicing as a real estate problem solution strategist. She finds solutions for individuals with real estate problems that are dealing with life challenges such as divorce, job loss, health issues, grief, any situation that is not allowing them to make house payments or it's making it difficult to keep their current property. She helps those clients achieve peace of mind. So she has dedicated herself to a year to learn how to invest in real estate using little to no money. And her favorite strategy right now is wholesaling. And we are gonna hear more from Ivy Morales right now. Thank you everybody for joining us today. We are with Ivy Morales and Ivy is going to tell us all about her entrepreneurial journey and all of the awesome things she is doing in real estate right now. Welcome to the show, Ivy. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Yes. Okay. So before you start, I want Camille Davis to tell us how did you meet Ivy? Cammy. Yes. So we went to, it's called Greater Houston Rhea. It used to be the Rich Club. And they're now transitioning it to a different group. And I was about to speak. They had asked me to speak on the worst deal that I'd ever have in real estate. And so I was going to get up there, but I was the very, very last one. And then Ivy was there and she couldn't stay for the whole thing. So she didn't even see me. She didn't even see me speak, but we got each other's numbers. And then from there, she had a wholesale deal. It was a subject too. And she said, hey, do you want to do this deal? I said, yes, I would love to do that deal. And so then we just started talking from there. And I said, you know what? You really need to share your story with everyone because she literally started this. She can tell the story, but it's been maybe a year. Has it been a year, Ivy? Yeah. Well, it's going to be a year in August. Yeah, Yeah. but she she's one of those that just kind of her whole life changed and she dropped everything and then just became this amazing, successful wholesaler. So I just I knew she had to share her story. So I'm just excited. Yes. Perfect. Love how you teed that up for us. Okay, so Ivy, tell us all about you, about what kind of work you're doing and how you got started with all of this. Well, the way I got started, I had some life challenges. Right. And then um, I thought I was going to be doing mostly mortgage loans. And my sister-in-law invited me to a real estate meeting. And then because she thought, because I knew about mortgage, you know, you naturally know about real estate, right? No, (laughs) not about investing, not about investing. So I went to um, the meeting. She ends up getting the actual uh, classes paying like a very high ticketed, you know, should we tell, should we tell how much she paid for this? <laughs> $40,000. This is normal, like 20 to $40,000, even up to $60,000 people will pay to learn to do real estate. But what normally happens is they don't get the hands-on, they don't get the one-on-one, they usually don't take action, but, but go ahead, keep going. Yeah, we'll so, come back to that. We're going to come back to that, Cammie, but go ahead, Ivy, tell us the story. Yeah. So then uh, what happened was that uh, I started when I saw her pay 40,000, I was like, oh, wow, I have to commit to this. I have to, I have to do this. Um, For her, it was totally different. For her, it was more like I paid it and then she never did anything with it. She just didn't even try to uh, understand the whole system. With this particular program that I enrolled in, uh, Epic Real Estate, they will give you coaches uh, one-on-one. And I knew that if I had a coach or a mentor, that would would work wonders with me because I knew I would go ahead and take the time to learn it um, and then to take action because I committed. When I saw her pay that, I committed. 
So um, after that, I started learning and just like everybody else, you get all like, I have to have that contract, that first contract. <laughs> The first contract is everything. So um, I started doing like everything I could do to be able to get my first contract. So I went through uh, Craigslist. I purchased even like um, with uh, real estate IQ lists. Um, I did. So I got my first contract. It actually came from Craigslist. And that's actually something that I, I, I'm like, I love Craigslist. I'm super committed to Craigslist. Most of my uh, deals actually come from Craigslist. Most of my best deals. Yeah. And um, yeah, so then um, after that, I started getting one deal. Then I started learning that in the real estate investing business, there's so many strategies. So it's not, yeah, so it's not just one. And so then I started learning the different strategies and taking action, implementing them little by little, of course, with the help of my mentor, my coaches, and so forth. So, I mean, it was, it's been totally different than mortgage, like night and day. And, uh, but it's been very fulfilling, you know, because once you start, you first go for the money, right? Well, that's my experience. I first went for the money. It was like, okay, the money. But then I noticed I became more successful once I started thinking about the problem solving of it. So once I made that switch, I started getting more deals and knowing how to handle them and how to solve them and how to. So right now, um, I do a lot of wholesaling because that's my preference as of this moment. Um, but I am actually, I recently, when I spoke with Camille, she was talking like, you have to think about your future, you know, you have to have something coming in. So I'm currently, I'm happy to say this, working on a deal where I will be holding it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> will be my first, my first. So hopefully everything is going to go well. It is a, a subject to you. Yay. Yes. So because I, I was able to see how it worked at first, it was so new. Mm -hmm. but then once you see how it works and then and believe it or not, I do have like another two more subject twos of Yeah, that I'm working on. I, so but I'm excited about this one. So let's see how it goes. OK, if you need help on that, that's what our women's group does is if you want to become a part of the community, we will yeah. help you do the deal. We will help you do the financing and we can oh, partner. Okay. So there's all kinds of opportunity with that too. So you don't have to do it on your, all by yourself. And then I can walk you through those deals and, and just be a partner or a handholder and you can buy me out. It doesn't mean I have to stay in the deal with you or anything. So, but that's part of, that's part of the, the women's group that we're doing. Yeah, oh, and let's, wow. let's talk so about neat. Women's Wealth Collective real quick. We're just going to take a tangent just for a second. Okay. Uh, tell us about Women's Wealth Collective um, and, yes. and how women can find, how, how women can work with you. Um, in yes. It's pretty much, it's kind of transformed. Um, I do have, um, you know, I do have to say again, Renee is the reason this is all happening. <laughs> and I'm not going to forget you, Renee. I promise <laughs> you, I'm not going to forget you because you, we're the catalyst for all of this. Um, I wouldn't have done this. I really wouldn't have done this without Renee. So, um, so Misty is actually our coach. So people who want brand new, um, they're, they're brand new. They don't know anything about real estate. We get them in and Misty coaches them. There's an eight week program and it's, she teaches wholesaling, but it's also business processing is um, how do you get your CRM in place? How do you get your, calls or how do you get your list just teaches the basics about real estate then once they get through that program then they can come partner with me we provide the foreclosed houston list we provide um people search and we provide pr private lending i have the private lending contacts because it takes a long time to actually build up your private lenders yeah. so then i provide all of that and i love doing the deals with people so if you have a deal, I have one lady that her father just died 
and she has an estate and she has all this money that's going to be coming in, but she has a deal that she found and she was just going to wholesale it. And I said, no, don't wholesale it. Let me partner with you and let me put up the money. Then when your dad's money comes through, then buy me out of it. And now you have the deal instead of wholesaling it, you can keep it. I'm all about keeping them, keep them. Yeah. Every, every person I've ever talked to all the wholesalers, they all say years later, I wish I would have kept more of my properties. So, um, so yeah, we have with me and Misty and we're not, we're not charging $20,000. We're not charging even $10,000. So you're getting a community, you're getting hands-on, you're getting a lot of help. And it's just, that's the whole purpose is to, is to do what you have felt. I think with your coaching that you've gotten some help with that. So it's, it's amazing. I I love it. I love it. And I wanted to say this too. So I keep thinking Misty Flanagan, Misty got married um, not long ago and she's got a new baby. Um, and so it is now Misty Hassenstab. Is that how we pronounce Hassen, it? Hassenstab, I think. Yeah, yeah. I think that's right. So Misty Hassenstab. And ladies, if you look back through the episodes, Misty was one of our earlier episodes, probably episode two or three. Um, and so just look for Misty. Um, and so I changed the name. I did have Misty Flanagan, but since she's Misty Hassenstab now, we, we changed the name of the episode. <laughs> so just look for her and you can hear the conversation with me and Misty and Cami. And I think that that episode probably went for like 90 minutes as we were just talking through all of the coaching stuff. But Ivy, I want to come back to what you were saying that is so, so very important that you found it really helpful to have a program that you signed up for, you put money into it and you actually worked the program. Then Mm -hmm. your friend or cousin, whom was it that went with you? My sister-in-law. Sister-in-law also put money into the program. So did you both pay separately or was it one payment for both people? It was just one payment for both. And so she did nothing with it, but you took the ball and ran. Yeah. Yes. I took the ball and ran. (laughs) So it's all about what you, what you get out of it, any program, like Cammie's program or the one that you went with Ivy, what you get out of it really depends on what you put into it. It's almost like diet and exercise. Like it doesn't work. If you don't work the system, it, it just, it doesn't work if you don't work it. And so you yeah. have to be willing to make that commitment. You can be successful in any, almost as far as I know, like virtually any niche of real estate investing works if you work it. Is Correct. that the case for you right now, Ivy? Yeah, that's what I've noticed because as I learn different strategies, I do tend to implement them because I mean, you just start learning about probates and then all of a sudden a probate deal comes into your, yeah, into your lab and then you just start working them and then you start learning how you have to get all of these different signatures from everyone, how, you know, there's percentages that are involved um, and how to be able to talk to them because all of them, you have to treat them differently. Like the people that are going through a divorce they're totally different from the people that are going through a probate. And then the people that are going through pre-foreclosure, that's a totally different type of person. Um, So yeah, so there's a whole lot of, it's very interesting. I I really like it. Um, I like the whole dynamic of the whole thing, so. Yeah, so when Mm -hmm. you first got into this, you already had a mortgage license. You were already a mortgage loan officer. Yeah, I I became a mortgage loan officer, but just in theory. So I had been, you know, I just went in, got my license. I'm still licensed, uh, but I didn't practice because as soon as I got my license approved, my sister-in-law asked me, please come with me so you can ask questions and answer questions for me. And I thought, okay. So then uh, when I saw that, I was like, well, this seems interesting. And now she did this. She's not doing anything with it. I have to do something. So I think it came down to being committed. Yes. Oh, that's a good word. Yeah. Committed. Oh, that's the, that's the word of the century. (laughs) And again, again, it comes back to that. Like you have a plan and you think you're going one way, but those plans connect you to other avenues that 
that really are meant to be. We were talking about that earlier today, me and Renee, <laughs> that, mm-hmm. um, that I feel like it's these puzzle pieces. Like, you know, I was the nurse and then I ended up becoming, but all those skills and all those things I learned going to school, becoming a nurse, then it, then it slowly just became this real estate thing, but they were meant to be, all those steps were meant to be, to lead me to where I am today. And so that's, that's exactly what happened to you. You learned about the mortgages and you finished that schooling, but it still directed you to the right place that you were supposed to be today. Yeah. Yeah. It still directed me. And then even when I started looking for private money, I was like, okay, I'll become a private broker. And then I was like, oh, so it's a bunch of things there, but at the same time, it's all connected. And I know, I mean, I've been doing this for about almost a year, you know, we said earlier, um, so I know it's all like that. It's going to all come together. Yeah. And- I feel like the opportunities are endless when you start learning all these different things with real estate, all the different jobs you can provide for people, all the different avenues you can go to. I just yeah. feel like it opens up this whole other world mm-hmm. and it's so, there's so much opportunity. It's so like freeing and yes. exciting. <laughs> I, mean, I love it. It really is. The other thing that I noticed too, um, that I wanted to mention Ivy is that you have, um, when you started, you were brand new to hold to, I'm sorry, you're brand new to uh, mortgage lending. So before that you weren't in real estate, like you don't, were you in real estate before you were doing mortgages? No. So you don't have to have a real estate background necessarily to be successful as a wholesaler or a real estate investor. Would you agree with that? 100%. Yeah. I think I, people I think they need to have some kind of real estate, like knowledge. They need to know a whole lot about real estate before they can do their first deal. Um, and I, I don't, I don't think that's true. No, I, I, my, I mean, my background mainly, I like to say sales, but in reality is uh, information technology. So, and I worked for corporate America for many, many years. Uh, I actually worked for Verizon Wireless for many years. And then after they moved, I decided to stay here because my support system was here. So I went ahead and uh, everybody used to tell me, you would be great at sales. And I used to be like, no, no, I cannot do sales. I could never do sales. And then when this whole thing, you know, happened, I went ahead and I started going into sales and I started liking it. And, uh, and at first it was like, let me just try this sales job. And it was like, um, that would get me with no, no experience or anything. And I got, I was selling cruises and I, and I was doing great, but then they had this weird pay how it would be like two years later or something like that so then I was like okay well so what's a higher ticket than that and it was cars so I went and I started I worked for uh, Lexus and I started selling cars and I was like oh this is great you know and then that's when I thought okay what's a higher ticket than that and then and then it was houses But then when I started reading about like to get my real estate business, I mean, my real estate license, for some reason, I started looking into mortgages. And then I I was like, I can do this. I'll just get a license for mortgages. And I didn't know it was so intense, (laughs) but I did it. (laughs) So, yeah, yeah. but I will be, I will be, um, I'm actually looking into once this year is over for real estate, um, investing in August, which is, you know, pretty much next month, I will be implementing my mortgage licensing. Yeah. Yeah. And Cami was also someone that put that (laughs) in my head. It was like, wait a minute, (laughs) you could be doing this. You could be doing that. So I was like, okay, let me go ahead and start, um, researching and I actually started researching there was someone that was that reached back to me from Nexa I don't know if you're familiar yeah Nexa Mortgage and they're you know like we're supposed to have meetings and stuff like that I know you mentioned Cami um, EXP but I couldn't find anything really on them uh, for the mortgage side oh okay yeah so that 
that's, that's what I had brought up is EXP mm -hmm. um, will, if you have a mortgage license, you can get paid on every loan is 0.5%. So mm -hmm. a half a percent, a half a point, I'm sorry, a half a point, but you can get paid on every loan you do. Well, you think if you, if you're already working with people and you're getting them qualified for loans and it's a $400,000 house. I mean, if you just refer them and they get qualified for that loan, they, you get a half a point for that. So that that's money. That's just a side thing that just comes from doing the business. So I, I did tell her, I said, yeah, just keep, keep this going. You already did the work for it. <laughs> Still right. use it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I actually, um, I'm currently licensed with EXP and I'm not familiar with the program that you're referring to, Cami, not through, not through EXP, like EXP doesn't have a mortgage company. Um, oh. But I would say to do your due diligence for those who are listening, that there are all kinds of programs that brokerage, real estate brokerages will offer if you um, work with their clients and do mortgages or mortgage loans for them, then they will pay you a certain percentage. So that is very true that there is way, there are ways to get paid on those, but people have to do their research to find those programs and they do exist. Absolutely. Ivy, yeah. I should, I should connect you with the person. Um, it was Samantha, Renee connected me. Yeah, Samantha Ward, her. yeah. She, her husband got his mortgage um, license because of that. And it is some lender that works with EXP, but maybe they're not for EXP, yep. but that's where he, oh. that's where he gets all of his stuff. So I could connect you with them too. But again, this is all about connections, right? The more you're yeah. around like my landed people, I met Samantha through Renee and then found out about that EXP thing. And then it's just, it's just, I love it. Networking. It's a great yes. Networking is hugely important. Networking and mentoring are hugely important. Ivy, um, so then my next question for you would be, as far as the mentoring program that you joined, do you feel like you are actually receiving like the benefit of the mentors um, of, from the program that you're using? Yes. I, I do feel like I'm benefiting. And the reason why, I mean, like, I understand that your mentors, and I think that that's something because I've seen other students that are with me in my um, uh, starting that they try to reach out to, to the mentor. One thing I think that we have to keep in mind is like for a mentor, um, it's they're there to help you and they will help you and they will guide you but you have to, i i noticed that you know a lot of us they want us to like give us every single answer to things that are very it's almost like when i use my mentors i make sure that i have done my research mm. and that i have information and that i'm able to go ahead and understand because i have to be 100% mindful of my mentor's time because they're busy. These are people that are investing. And I imagine like I see how much time it takes when I'm working on deals. Um, it takes a lot of time, you know, and sometimes and Houston is huge. So sometimes I have to drive to Pasadena or to almost to Galveston um, and, you know, to see properties and things like that. And I can only imagine, I only have like two deals working at a time and they sometimes have like six deals working, you know? So you have to be mindful, but I noticed that every single time that I use that time with my mentor wisely by putting in, you know, I send them an email with all the details. I have my questions, you know, three, four questions in place. I will, I maximize my time with my mentor and I'm able to go ahead and understand whatever I don't understand after that call, I'm able to research. And then I have one-on-one -on -one calls um, every day between like one to uh, 3 p.m. that I can jump and get off the call and then jump back on if I have a question. So that's how that particular system, Epic uh, Real Estate has it. So yes, it's worked wonders for me. I. I use them like all the time. So the do, time. do we all agree, all three of us agree that anyone can do real estate investing if you have enough hustle? Yes. Yes. 
Yeah. Yes. So a lot of people feel like I don't have the money. And I'm like, girl, money is not your issue. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's my really sister, not the problem. My sister just told me that today. She's like, yeah, I would love to buy homes, but I don't have any money. And I said, girl, no, you can do this without money. I don't use my own money. I it's knowledge and use other people's money. And, and it's true. You can do this without any of your own money. Yeah. Even your marketing. I mean, I've, I've been doing my marketing with Craigslist and that was one thing that I was, when I got into the program, I thought I was like, I'm going to see if it's true that you cannot do it with no money. Yeah. And it's true. I can actually make money out of thin air. Yes. Just knowledge. Yeah. (laughs) Just with the knowledge. Yeah. Yeah. And some people would say, okay, well, you're saying you didn't use any money, but you know, you paid 40,000 or your sister-in-law paid $40,000 for this mentoring thing. Like I don't have $40,000 to pay for that. So what would your answer be to someone? I mean, I know how I would answer it, but I'm going to let you, you both take a shot at this. I don't have $40,000 to pay for a mentoring program. I don't even have $10,000 to like pay for pay for education. I, I might have, you know, five to $7,000 that I can get my hands on. How can I possibly like start if I don't have a coach or a mentor, I can't pay somebody to show me how to do, how do I start? I would say, first of all, there's YouTube, right? You can go into YouTube. Okay. YouTube University. <laughs> hey, that, that is actually where I learned because I didn't have a mentor. That is exactly. Some people call me, one, one of my friends calls me the YouTube girl. Like I learned to be a real estate YouTube girl. Because that's exactly where I learned it. Yes. Yes, because once you're in YouTube, like I have coaches, but believe me, whenever I get stuck in something or I start listening to someone, like I'll start listening to Pace. Uh, a little bit more pace more me. and then all of a sudden my, yeah um all of a sudden I become like obsessed with that particular YouTube channel and I'll be reaching out to I'll, re- I'll join the Facebook groups so that would be another way you can go about it join the Facebook groups reach out to individuals um go ahead and go to the RIAs I mean I got to meet Camille at the RIA yeah so yeah, so go to the RIAs. Another thing that I feel like it's useful that keeps me fresh too with information and also um, helps me listen or learn new information is those meetup um, meetings. They have the Zoom classes from meetup. So I went ahead and enrolled in the meetups too. So I would suggest do that. There you can also meet people, network with people there. Um, the speakers, I mean, they're wonderful people. You can, they'll give you their emails. I, I remember one time I was like thinking that my whole strategy was going to be fix and flip. And I literally reached out to, she's a red hair um, lady. They call her, I don't know, but she has this catchphrase that says something like, it's flipping great or having a flipping day. <laughs> and she's just amazing. Um, so, or the red flipping, I don't know, but I'll, I'll look her up. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, but I reached out directly to her. This woman has like, I mean, her own uh, real estate company and everything. And she's been flipping houses and she actually answered my email and was able to direct me the right way when I was looking for a title company that was investor friendly. And which is very important for us as investors to have an investor friendly company. So, I mean, there's so many people out there that are willing to help. Believe it or not, there is. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So Cammie, um, did she miss any? We've got, well, Uh, recap. I said Rhea, she said meet up. She said YouTube. What else, what else do you got, Cammy? if I don't have any money? She, no, she did awesome. Um, I mean, because there's now there's Instagram. Now there's um, TikTok. I mean, 
there are people and there is information, free information out there that you can learn yourself. I think the mentoring is more, yes, it's important, but it's more of a, uh, takes out the fear. It takes that, it's a mindset yes. thing where, the, where the mentoring, you think, okay, I've got somebody here in my back corner, but you don't have to have that person if, cause the information's all there. It really is. And, um, yeah, she gave some great resources. Yeah. I would totally, everything that she said right there. I don't even know if I can think of another one, honestly. Yeah, I love it. So, so this is, this is the, um, the list. So we've got RIA, which is a real estate, um, investors association. So join your local RIA. Um, if they have a fee, then maybe you don't want to join, but you can go to some of the free events and meetings. Yes. Um, yeah. Meetup.com has like a ton of real estate investing stuff. If there's not a meetup group that's near you, ladies, start one. Just start a group. There are other women who also want to be real estate investors. If you go to meetup.com, you start a group. I think it's 30 or 40 bucks a month to like lead a group. And then you just have interesting conversations with people and invite an inspector, invite other investors, invite people to come. If there's not one local like close to you, you can start a group on meetup.com for relatively cheap or you can go to meet up for free. Um, the other thing that's beneficial, Cami is the queen of learning things on YouTube. Like back in the day, I think when her babies were little, she she learned how to do subject two. She read a book one time so she knew it existed. And from there she started doing deals from YouTube um, and learning how to do stuff. Then now we've got social media with TikTok, Instagram, Facebook. So there are all kinds of things you can learn there. There are wholesalers and other people on LinkedIn you can join to watch videos there. Um, and then of course, podcasts where you can listen if you're driving or working out or doing something else. And even if we're not teaching on a specific topic, like how to go and like purchase a house today, this listening really, really helps to build your motivation and your encouragement so that you can see other ladies who are like normal, like we just hustle. I mean, there's nothing special about us that makes us like super women. Like we're normal super women, just like the ladies listening are normal. We're all normal super women. That's what we are. And so my background, I'm, I have a background in like corporate operations and HR with like hospitals and healthcare. Cammie's a nurse by trade who then started doing this. Ivy, sounds like you've done a lot of things in sales from cruises to cars, mortgages, and now you're doing real estate investing. So pretty much anybody can do this if they have enough grit, hustle. It, it really is just the mindset, right? Yeah. Yeah, it is a mindset. Yeah, it's a mindset. And knowing that you are helping you're helping people out there because so you truth, once you start really going into real estate, you'll start noticing that it is about helping people. These are motivated sellers are just desperate people that have an issue that they can't sleep at night, you know, and then, you know, you're there as an expert to be able to go ahead and help them achieve that, you know, that peace of mind. And it's, I mean, believe it or not, I, it's very fulfilling at the end of the day when you're able to help someone that is potentially going to have 10 years of bad credit and you're able to go ahead and help them out. I mean, and they may not be able to get a house later, but because you were able to help them, they're able to go ahead and move on with their lives. I mean, it, it, it's very rewarding. So that's, good. That's, good. Mm -hmm. that's the key. Yeah. That's the key right there. Yeah. When you mm -hmm. start doing it, it becomes about the people. And once it's about the people, you will be successful no matter what. That's the yeah, it, it will switch. Like once when I was doing it for, for the money, it was like I was getting deals, but it was hard. Once I made that switch, it just started pouring in. And then I, I started seeing things different, which yeah. is, it's more exciting. And then you start meeting a lot of ladies. There's a lot of ladies here in Houston, you know, <laughs> that are investors, which is really, really, really nice because then you get to talk to each other. We all have, and sometimes I even have like, there's 
uh, other students in, in my team that they don't have anyone to go with to houses and they may feel kind of like, oh, I don't feel that comfortable going here. And sometimes I go with them, you know, to, to see the house and stuff. It's still experience for me, you know, but we're helping each other. Yes. Yeah. So yeah, that's why I was mentioning mm-hmm. starting a meetup group because not everybody's listening in Houston. Not everybody's listening in a major city or a major mar- metropolitan area. Um, as you know, oh. podcasts go all around the world. So somebody may be listening to this in Sri Lanka or Baghdad or you know any somewhere else. And so oh. if women are able to have the finances to do what they need to do to make the purchases or to find the um, the funds to do the investment. Starting a group helps you to feel like you have a community of people with you to go look yeah. at properties or to go, you know, do it together or to just talk about it. Like, this is what we're dreaming of doing. And then maybe you can get together. Um, we were talking to Lexi Sims on another podcast episode about crowdfunding. Like, maybe a group of ladies can get together and purchase a property together and then split the proceeds, you know, once they sell it. And it, you may not make a ton of money, but you're learning. Um, and all the while, you have this community that you're building that you can do it together with. Um, but I, yeah. I have a question for you, Ivy. Um, something that you said about that Cami told you to do, which I think is so, so important. As a wholesaler or as a flipper, you're constantly finding properties, helping sellers, and then making money without holding those properties. So you're helping the seller out of their situation, then you make money by flipping it or either like taking ownership of the property and flipping it or by doing Mm -hmm. wholesaling where you never actually even own the property. It's kind of like you're flipping paper. Um, But when you do that, you don't own the property. So you have to keep doing it and doing it and doing it. Like when you stop getting your next flip or your next wholesale deal, you stop making money. So how did, how did Cammie help you see the light that like buy and hold is like the way to go? (laughs) Well, uh, when I was uh, talking to her about that deal, she offered to partner. And at the moment I was like, how is that going to work? You know, because I I'm, I'm trying to understand it. But because we were in, you know, dealing with the situation, I was like, no, this is what I want. And we would just, you know, I will look into that later. And of course, I have other things there that, you know, made me kind of hesitant to go for that. Um, But then when I was, when once all of that, you know, died down, I started thinking, wait a minute, let me go ahead and think about what she just said, because This is something that happens just like whenever you learn a new um, strategy, you start doing only one one strategy and then it takes you a little bit of time to think differently. So I took the time and I started looking into how could I do that? How could I start holding and how to change my perspective? So for me, what it took was to think about it in a way that it was, why wouldn't I want to keep a house that somebody else is paying for? Me. Like, why wouldn't I want someone to buy a house for me? And that's practically where the whole subject to it comes into place. And uh, once I changed my perspective and I started seeing it that way, then I started thinking, okay, this is what I, now learning about holding it it's a little bit more involved you know because now I have to think about what's more important my cash on on cash return or um, things like that right so but it's it's I mean it's been a lot of learning it's been a learning curve but I that's how I started thinking about it so she put that seed into my head (laughs) and then now it's I started looking and for some reason all of this next deals they have been from elderly uh, people that own uh, rentals already and they're not wanting to deal with them anymore so they're used to monthly payments so and they're open to that they don't want to deal with 
all of the, you know, capital gains, tax, and all of that. So they're willing to go with the seller um, finance or subject to and so forth. So, yeah, so that's how it happened. I had to go more into it and change my perspective because I wasn't even thinking that way, you know? I was just like, oh, make a quick buck. That's it, in and out. And you know what I love about Ivy is she is willing to learn. She's willing to change. She's willing to change her perspective and she's willing to take action and implement what she's learning. So that, I mean, if you, if you do that and you talk to someone who's done this for a little while, someone who has experience and you're open to learning those things, I mean, that that's key, right? You, you can't teach people who aren't willing to learn <laughs> how to, how to yeah. do it and how to, and put it in place. And that's what, that's what Renee was saying too. But um, I love that my comments like helped you out because I could have been, yeah. okay, I could have done this and said, you know, what? I want you to keep wholesaling to me. So I'm not going to tell you my side of this, right? And there's a lot of people out there that it's become, it's a competition thing. Well, don't teach everyone how to do subject two because then they're going to be your competition. But when you really truly get this in your life and you learn it, you realize there's this, there's enough out there for everybody. And why not help you be successful? Because I will just, it will come back to me and I will be successful too. And it's a different, it's a different mindset. Like just like the different perspective in like, Hey, I can hold this myself and, Oh, and I want to yeah. help people. I don't want to, it's not about money. Right. It's a, it's a different, it's a different mindset. And I love, I love everything that you're saying. It's amazing. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. all about having an abundance mentality. And so instead of, instead of a scarcity mentality, there is plenty yeah. to go around. And that's just the way that life is. I don't know how many of our listeners are faith-based people, But what goes around comes around or you get what you give in life. And so if you give positive and you help people, that comes back to you. That doesn't mean that you won't have strife or turmoil at some, you know, junctures in your life. But it does mean that overall, that when you put positive energy into the world, that positive things come back to you, maybe in some other form, but they do come back. Mm -hmm. And so those are the kinds of people that we want to be. Um, I want to harp on this real quick, just for the listeners who are like, why would I not flip? Why would I not take a bucket of cash instead of like holding something? And then I got to like fix broken toilets. Like, why would I want to do that? And so I want the listeners to understand if you're getting an education or like you're learning with us, that the taxes are very different when you flip. So when you're flipping, you own a job. So the way that you're paying taxes are very different than when you hold a property that has depreciation, you get tax benefits for that. Um, You also can pull out the cash and do a cash out refinance and not get cashed on, not get taxed on any of that cash. Um, You can do a 1031 exchange on properties that you own, which means that you don't pay tax, you're your um, generational wealth like is not affected as much because you, your kids don't have to pay taxes on that money when you do a 1031 exchange. Um, mm-hmm. And then you have somebody else who's paying the mortgage, which Ivy already mentioned, like, why would I not want to own a house where somebody else is paying for it? <laughs> yeah. So there's so mm-hmm. many benefits. So Ivy, are you, are you, do you agree with that? Like, are you weighing like the wholesaling or flipping versus the buy and hold? Like, yeah, there's like a lot of benefits. Yes. Yes. I, I'm, I see, I'm starting to see all the benefits from the holding. Um, and I am making that switch where, you know, that instant satisfaction where you just getting the money you, and then you just move on. <laughs> So you're, you're seeing, okay, where are the benefits here? And then you're seeing, and then it's so exciting because now you're looking at, and I mean, there might be some houses I may decide to wholesale, but now I'm thinking, yeah, you know, it depends on what the situation calls, but you know, like now I'm starting to, this is, this is, I'm, I'm going to be holding houses you know, yeah. so, and I can see the benefit. I see the benefit on the, in the tax in the long term over time, not only with the depreciation, but also the appreciation and then the rental, 
you know how it's going up, up and up. Um, and that's guaranteed in the most part, you know, to, yeah. to go up. So all of those little details that are coming back, you know, it, um, they're really making a difference to, to help me see how it's different, you know, not just get that instant gratification of, of the money right away and move on and yeah. start from zero because every month I start from zero and it's a job it's more of a job so with the holding it's more of a, a you have passive income coming in but you, it's less of a job there you go <laughs> that's key right <laughs> yeah it's less of a job <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah but and I I also think you know if you love flipping then flip Like if it doesn't feel like a job to you, then flip them. So you were saying, um, like when I talked to you before, you said, I love negotiating. And I was like, wow, that is so interesting because I am not a negotiator. I'm not good at that, but I can still be good at real estate. Right. But, and I always thought, I always thought I had to be good at negotiating to be a really good real estate investor. But, um, (laughs) but you know, you find those things that you love and you do those um if you love wholesaling then go ahead and wholesale um but what i i wanted to say i think that you touched on ivy was that there are a couple of different ways and i should know these by heart um the ways that real estate is beneficial beneficial to you financially so one is that the property is appreciating two is that you get the benefit of depreciation on your taxes Three is that you have tenants who are buying down, like who are um, who are paying down your mortgage as you like own the mortgage. Someone else is is paying down the mortgage. Um, mm-hmm. Or as I mentioned before about the 1031 exchange, like you can defer the taxes in per- perpetuity, like forever if you do a 1031 exchange. That's a different conversation for a different day. Um, but I know that there are some some solid benefits, you know, that people talk about to owning real estate versus just, you know, doing the flipping or doing the wholesaling. And I think it's important really that you have a toolbox where you're able to do multiple things. So Cammy said, if you love wholesaling, wholesale, for sure, for sure. Absolutely. If you're a golden negotiator, girl, do it, do it, enjoy it. Um, but I would also say to put in your toolbox for your future, like, so that when you're, you don't want to be at zero every month. That's that start. Like when you said that, I'm like, yeah, that's true. Like you're at zero. Like once you do your last deal, there is no more money until you pick up the next deal. And yeah. so that's kind of harsh to like think about, even though you're getting these big chunks of 30,000 or 40,000 or I don't know, 5,000. Some people are making small amounts or big amounts on their flips. But then once mm-hmm. that's done, like, you got to be on the hustle bus like every day to get the next property when you're a wholesaler. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You have to, you have to be in the hustle. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So and um, even, even when you, I mean, I love, like uh, Kami was saying, I love closing. I love the negotiating part. I mean, that's like, uh, I live for that moment. <laughs> I look forward to that moment. Uh, but still though, I mean, I can still, I can still do it. Yeah, I can still do the whole, I mean, it just, it all depends. Because once you start seeing this as a whole, uh, it's, it's just, it's so true what they say about real estate investing. It is simple and it's kind of shallow, but it's so wide. There's so many, so much information out there in so many different ways and how to do one thing. Um, so I would say that, yeah, with, with time, I would just focus more on how to negotiate myself, my own deal for holding. And I, I notice I can get the most out of that too, because I don't have to pay the wholesaler. So that helped me. So good. Learn. So, yeah. <laughs> And so I I think what I just heard you say was when you get started in real estate investing, maybe pick a niche to start with, and then you can kind of like learn more or branch out from there. 
Yes, yes. And wholesaling is so easy. You know, like if you're wanting to prove yourself that you're actually able to make money with this out of thin air, just do a wholesale deal. You know, you will be able to get money out of that. And if that that money that you get will help you then start going into or get your mentoring or start your new um, uh, group where you start, you know, creating your own mastermind type of groups, um, then that if you could do that with wholesaling because it would just be quick money that just comes in. Of course, the first deal may take you like 30 or maybe what the average is three months, they say. Um, but still, you would be able to to um, get use that money for your education. And then once you learn this, I mean, there's nothing. And I, at the beginning, I wasn't willing to go ahead and put any money into marketing and marketing is key. So I was using Craigslist and out of that Craigslist, I went ahead and created a spreadsheet. Out of that Craigslist, I got contractors, wholesalers where I maximized my phone calls from Craigslist. I JV with them. If, I, if the deal is really good, I will let them know okay so you have this you have this many days to get uh this deal done because we have a limit of time to get deals done right and i have buyers because now i created a list of buyers i concentrated on my buyers too so and i got them off of craigslist too and didn't that didn't take any money we, we all have cell phones you know so So that's all. And then once you learn that, then you just move on. And then there's people that come out of nowhere that want to be your partner, people with money that want to partner with you out of nowhere. They're just like, hey, I'll I'll pay for everything that you have. Of course, because I've been so new and I'm learning, um, I don't feel that comfortable to like rely on somebody else's money. But as time moves on, you know, now I'm, I feel more comfortable. So I'm like, okay, yes, we're going to do this. We're going to do that. And it's just building your confidence. Yeah. Yeah. Gotcha. So I just want to say real quick, JV means to joint venture, like you're partnering with someone or doing a joint venture together, which is kind of what you and Camille talked about doing earlier. Um, And then for wholesaling, can you give us just a quick, like your personal definition of what wholesaling is just to make sure that everybody's on the same page? For wholesaling, for me, like how, like we would purchase the house at a discounted price. Is that what you're looking for? Yeah, just to or, find it. Like, do you actually purchase the property as a wholesaler or do you get it under contract and then you flip that contract okay. to an investor and you get paid in the middle? Yeah. So wholesaling for me has been where, uh, well, it is that I would go ahead and find a property right? And then I go and negotiate the price and I negotiate it to where I can actually leave some uh, money there for the investor and also get some money for me. I put it under a contract and I allow myself about 15 business days. Okay. And then uh, once I get that contract, I negotiate the pricing and all that. I get the contract then I submit it to my title company I find my buyer. And then once my buyer goes, I never have to go. I've never been to the title company. I mean, they know me because I call them, but I've never been there. They FedEx my checks over. That's it. So, um, but yeah, it goes to the title and then the title uh, will pay you. That's it. Sign and that's it. Yeah. So that is, I never invested any money in that. Yeah. In wholesaling. Like, yeah. I didn't pay I for that. Make sure people understand what wholesaling is because as we got through this conversation and I was thinking, oh, what if we have new people who really don't understand the, like they've heard of wholesaling, but they don't know what it is. And so just so oh. that people understand, let's give a, a hypothetical example. Let's say you find a house that you know the ARV or the after repair value is $200,000 after some investor like flips it and fixes it up, it would be $200,000. But right now Mm -hmm. it's in disrepair, it's either nasty or somebody has a situation that they just need out. 
And so they're willing to sell it in the current condition as is. You can negotiate to get them to sell it for, let's say, $80,000. But then you tell Mm -hmm. them that you then send, you know, you set it up with a title company and then you find a buyer who is an investor who would then maybe purchase it for $95,000 or $100,000. And then you make the money in the middle. Is that kind of how it works? Correct. In it, right? Yeah. Yeah. Pretty much. Yeah. Okay. Just want to make sure I explained it correctly. Um, and so, so with that being said, Miss Ivy Morales, now that we understand that you are a wholesaler, we understand that you are a, um, a mortgage loan officer, and now you're doing buy and hold. Um, how do people reach you if they want to get in touch with you to learn more or to ask questions? Well, they can connect with me through Facebook. I yeah. do have an Instagram uh, for Modern Royal Realty. I had it like that when I first started. Um, so it's at modernroyalrealty.com. Um, so, and then my email, they can reach out to my email. It's ivy at modernroyalrealty.com. And um, yeah, the, those would be the best ways to go about it. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. Well, yeah. Miss Camille, uh-huh. Camille Davis, thank you so much for joining us today. Yes. And um Ivy, we're opening your mind to other possibilities through the podcast. There <laughs> um, you go, how right? You can connect with more people and how you can get more deals and how you can get more buyers. Um, yes. So yeah, we're opening your mind to that possibility also. Absolutely. And this is awesome because I, I love it. I love like, you know, even in my, in the dealership where I was, our, most of my, my managers in the tower, they were all women. So I love that, you, you know, they're, you're creating a group with women and that, you know, we understand each other, what we go through and we can actually, yeah, support each other. I mean, that's, I, I love it. So I'm glad that you're doing that, Camille and Renee. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you so much Thank yeah. you for your time today. So this is Renee Williams for Camille Davis signing off. And thank you again, Ivy, for being with us today. That's all for this episode. Come back soon for more tools, resources, and great stories from successful women entrepreneurs. We believe you absolutely can build a business you love and have passive income. Until next time, thank you for listening.